England, Scotland, and the young viewers who've been writing pleading letters to us. Well, England players also feature strongly in tonight's headlines with goals from Trevor Francis, Brian Robson, Paul Mariner, and Bob Latchford. But it was the tactics of a Welshman which created one of the day's major surprises. First, we go to Anfield for the Merseyside derby between Liverpool and Everton, a packed house teeming with excitement and anticipation, a cold but fine day. What more could anyone wish for, including your commentator, John Watson? The fact that today's all-ticket crowd at Anfield is almost 20,000 up on the attendance for last Wednesday's European Cup tie says something about the mentality of British football, but rather more about the tradition of this great fixture. And of the eight players sampling a Merseyside derby for the first time, two are goalkeepers of widely differing backgrounds. Everton's Jim Arnold didn't come into league football until he was 27. This is his first season in Division 1, but he can still point to two Wembley Cup finals when he was playing for Stafford Rangers in the FA Trophy. And at the other end, Liverpool's fans are still making up their minds about Bruce Grobelaar, whose early experiences included a spell in the Rhodesian Army. But succeeding Ray Clements requires a discipline all of its own. And after a long chat with manager Bob Paisley following the European Cup match, Robillard intends to curb an impetuous streak which has worried Liverpool's back four. One of those defenders, number three Mark Lawrenson, is playing his first derby, as are number eight Ronnie Whelan and number nine Ian Rush. An unchanged team means the only position for David Johnson is substitute, and that's the best that Craig Johnston has achieved in the first team so far, because today the expensive former Middlesbrough player is in the reserves derby match at Goodison Park. So too is Everton's Peter Eastow on his way back from injury, and his absence, together with that of Walsh and Ross, means Everton too are unchanged. The sale of Mike Thomas to Brighton means that Howard Kendall has bought seven and sold eight players in just four months and explains why only four of today's team took part in the last derby in March. Stevens, Ferguson and Ainscoe all being new to this occasion. The referee is Durham policeman Peter Willis. The 125th league derby between the two Merseyside clubs starts with Everton just ahead of Liverpool in the first division table. But they've only won one of the last 18 league matches between the two clubs, Everton although they did knock Liverpool out of the FA Cup last season. And as always, a din of noise. hoping to impose some of their European style on the match and calm it down at times. Here's Ray Kennedy to Mark Lawrenson. Into Rush. And here's offside McDermott. Offside Terry McDermott. No goal. Nicely worked move in that uh, Mark Lawrenson came inside. Dalgleish took a defender away. It went into Rush. Through to McDermott. But no doubt the flag was up for offside. Stevens. A bit tight the return. Alan Hansen seeing plenty of the ball and using the space in front of him well. Got uh, Rush on the left wing. Hansen. Dermot closing in and the header dips over. Very good service and very good anticipation too. The service from Hansen who's made so much good use of space as he's come forward in the early stages. And McDermott anticipating the ball over the defender's head but his header too just looped over. very well there to find O'Keefe but he had two to beat and here's Hansen oh that's well played by Alan Hansen now who's going to have it McDermott is it's going to come to Dalglish good start by Jim Arnold away by Lyons McDermott's pass took a deflection kindly for Dalglish Arnold saved thankfully for Everton
goalkeeper will be glad to get his first true save of the afternoon out the way. It's down sharply to block the shot. Ferguson. Well, that's nicely done to McMahon, and here's O'Keefe. They've got players forward here, and a flying catch. And the throw too from Grobla, giving Liverpool the chance to break out quickly. Neil Dalgleish, well played. Whelan, Rush. Robillard does specialise in this type of uh, interception. Very spectacular and very important there too. There were two Everton players waiting. <laughs> Bailey. Oh, and Robillard had begun to come then, which is one of the problems, and Thompson turned round and waved him back. And you saw a misunderstanding there, or the glimpse of one which has been worrying Liverpool in defence. Grobelard does tend to come off his line somewhat impetuously at times, but the delay is because Ray Kennedy is injured. Ray Kennedy, in fact, needs attention, and so I think does Mike Lyons. There have been two fairly heavy challenges in the last couple of minutes, and the referee is letting play go on. Dalgleish, and Lyons wasn't sure, and Dalgleish is in. Is it a penalty? No not given referee peter willis shook his head very very firmly dalgleish who wins so many penalties for liverpool on this occasion is unlucky mike lyons made the challenge dalgleish went down but the referee never had a moment's doubt now the substitution will be made ray kennedy hobbles off and ex evertonian david johnson comes on Lawrence. It's a good run by Lawrenson. Oh, and they all arrived together. McDermott, who threw himself at that, and just wide. Kenny Dalgleish is being booked for something he said to the referee. Well, that was a good piece of play again by Lawrenson from the back. McBride. Well, he had three all together there to get past. of a hectic first half no score Liverpool doing more of the attacking but Steve McMahon out midfield for Everton and an eventful first half in particular for Kenny Dalgleish had a penalty appeal turned down he then had to come back more into midfield when Kennedy went off with a calf muscle injury and then Dalgleish was booked by the referee presumably for something he said Many people at Anfield think that Ronnie Whelan may eventually succeed Ray Kennedy in this left-sided midfield position. Today he has a chance in the second half, now that Kennedy has gone off injured, to show what he can do in that role. So Everton start the second half. Liverpool now attacking the top end. There have been nine draws in the last 16 meetings, and six of those have been nil-nil. On by Dalgleish, and then by Johnson. And that throw by John Bailey appeared to be very close to the line, and the linesman decides it was over when Jim Arnold collected it, and it's a corner to Liverpool. Kenny Dalgleish, Liverpool in front, up 
after two minutes of the second half, look at the way Whelan cracked that. Jim Arnold couldn't hold it. Kenny Dalglish went in, and that's 1-0. Dalglish only his second league goal in very nearly a year. And Everton find themselves stung in Liverpool's first attack at the cop end. All because that throw-in by Bailey was apparently behind the line when it went back to his goalkeeper. Now David Johnson in pursuit. A little push by him, surely. Referees signalled that was the case. Well, what a start then for Ronnie Whelan in the second half. 20 years old. Republic of Ireland International playing his first Merseyside derby. His shot there set up the chance. And when it came back off the goalkeeper, Dalgleish didn't hang around. Ferguson on, his Lodge. And here's McBride. Right across and over. Joe McBride found some space there inside the Liverpool penalty area, curled the cross, and it's on the roof of the net. Free kick to Liverpool. Dermot to Sunis. That's awkward as David Johnson came in, corner. Mark Lawrence has gone onto the near post, number three. Phil Neal is also in the penalty area, it's played short to Sunis. McDermott. Oh, here's a chance again, perhaps, for Delgleish. Oh! He's got his second, and the cop are going wild. Look at those Liverpool players. There's a fan in there. Liverpool are two up, and Delgleish can do nothing wrong. Kerry McDermott put that ball through. Delgleish was behind the defence, but Mahon tried to reach him. His finish was clinical. Two goals in the space of five minutes for Kenny Dalglish. And Liverpool take a firm hold on the 125th league derby. The only consolation for Everton perhaps being the fact that Liverpool have been known in recent weeks to concede a two-goal lead. They were two up, you may recall, in Amsterdam against Alkmaar, and it ended 2-2. But Everton have got a huge job on here now. This is Rush, and now it's Whelan, the two comparatively new players combining for Liverpool. This is Ronnie Whelan, and Rush again. Third newcomer to this fixture, Lawrenson. Good cross. Oh, and it's Johnson offside. Offside, no goal. Johnson just realised. He's disappointed, as indeed are the cop behind him. But when Lawrenson went down the left and curled that ball in, the linesman was flagging against David Johnson, whose flying header went in. So, two goals for Liverpool, and two disallowed this afternoon. McDermott, Lodge. <laughs> Tussle with Sunis, McMahon gets involved as well. Lodge drives the ball against Sunis's legs, and gets pushed away by his own player Higgins, and the referee, again, feeling that uh, tempers are getting frayed.
Graham Souness, who he wants to speak to. Everton's free kick. Looking for Lions. Who stays forward now for the throw. Intercepted by Whelan. Oh dear me, there's an incident off the ball there over on the far side, right in front of the linesman. Bill Thompson going and Eamon O'Keefe is the Everton player involved and he left Ronnie Whelan on the ground and referee Peter Willis has got no option here the ball had gone and Eamon O'Keefe reacted violently on Ronnie Whelan and the linesman had an excellent view of that and I should imagine would be in a position to tell the referee exactly what he saw Ronnie Whelan, Howard Kendall's on the line, and I fancy that O'Keefe may have been sent off. The referee pointed towards the dressing room. Howard Kendall is protesting to the linesman on this side. Certainly, O'Keefe is coming off. There was a sending off, there was a double sending off in the derby here two years ago at Dermot and Stanley, and now O'Keefe has gone for Everton. Certainly at the moment, both teams are down to ten men. Here's Thompson. Neil. Sooness, it's getting very, very rough out there now. Whelan is still receiving attention from the trainer over on the far side. So Everton, two goals down. Are down to ten men. Oh, look at this now. There's some uh, heat down from that corner. Howard Kendall wants to bring on Alan Bailey. And I think it may be in place of Nick Ferguson. Bear in mind, they're a player short anyway, so we'll have to wait for this substitution to be made now as the referee talks to John Bailey about cooling down. Now, there are going to be two things happening here in pretty quick succession, because on one side of the field, Bailey wants to come on for Everton, in place, I think, of Ferguson, and Ronnie Whelan has just come back on the far side for Liverpool, having received attention, prolonged attention, following the retaliation on him by Eamon O'Keefe, which got O'Keefe sent off. But the referee is waiting because Howard Kendall is holding a conference as to who's going to come off, and in the end, I think it's going to be Ainscoe. David Johnson. Neil's cross, that's awkward. Dalgleish coming in. Referee's already blown. So just to recap what's happened here, Everton have lost O'Keefe, sent off, and they've brought Bailey on, number 12, the fair-haired player also making his first appearance in a Merseyside derby. He's come on in place of Alan Ainscoe. Ferguson! Oh! Robillard appeared to be going the wrong way! What an extraordinary save! Well, the important thing is he caught it. It was Everton's best effort of the afternoon. 
and I think we might see a rather unorthodox save here. The ball played forward for Mick Ferguson, who hit it with his right foot, and Grobelar uh, seemed to catch it over his left shoulder. So Ferguson foiled, and Grobelar happy. So the match simmering to say the least, but the score still 2-0 to Liverpool with that two goals in five minute spell early in the second half. And Everton with only ten men now trying to do something about it as John Bailey comes forward but makes a present of that to Phil Neal. And here's soon as he's got a chance to get McDermott going. And he's onside and it's four against two. Look at this for outnumbering the opposition. So Gleish plays it on and there's the shot from Johnson. And Johnson rush was it? Seemed to go in off Rush. <laughs> 74 minutes gone, 3-0 to Liverpool. A series of ricochets. David Johnson had the first chance. It was McDermott on the right who played the ball inside. It then went on to Kenny Dalglish. He saw two players to his left. One was number 12, David Johnson. Arnold saved. It came back. The defender, Johnson, rush, goal. The score is now 3-0. McBride. Not a bad cross, Mike Lyons far post. Johnson again, Sunes. Number four, Higgins. Well, Ian Rush's goal-scoring record is becoming quite extraordinary. He didn't know very much about that one, but he's now scored nine goals this season in eight games, and one of those he came on as a substitute. Offside. Fifteen minutes to go, and Liverpool building up here one of the most convincing derby match performances of recent years. Ferguson. Oh, here's McBride. Block was by Lawrence. It hit Whelan, who cleared it. Douglas. Oh, they're tearing them apart now. Rush on his way again. Here's Sunes. What a good stop by Jim Arnold. Ian Rush opening up Everton on their right side. Cutting in from that left-hand flank. And Graham Sunes was the player it was meant for. Number 11, his strike, and Jim Arnold was behind it. Not actually too difficult to save, perhaps, seeing it again. 